<laughs> I do. I admire the emergency services. Nurses I admire most. How they can cope in the NHS is beyond me. Because the NHS is fucked. <laughs> it is. You know, everyone... Everyone complains about the superbugs and the germs in the NHS, but let's be honest, that's the only thing that are doing really fucking well in hospitals at the moment. <laughs> They're the healthiest fuckers in there. It's like germs down the gym going, I'm a germ, I feel good. <laughs> it's not safe to be in hospitals anymore. Have you visited somebody recently in hospital? Have you noticed each bed's got a phone by the side of it? Do you know what that's for? That's to call a fucking ambulance. <laughs> you know the most important people in hospitals at the moment? The cleaners. Fuck the surgeons. Mrs. Mop's in charge now, you know. Soon we'll have a whole episode of Casualty just dedicated to cleaners where they're going out. Oh, I need 10 cc's of sift and set me up an IV of Domestos, quick. <laughs> we're low on flash, we're going to lose the stain. <laughs> Soon you'll have junior cleaners funneling around senior cleaners to learn how it's done. So we've got a dirty floor. What do we need for a dirty floor? Well, we need a bucket. <laughs> yes, we need a bucket, but we need a good dooby-doo. Dooby-doo? Yes. Dooby-doo. Don't know if you've been down to outpatients, it's humiliating down there. All they do is get you to take your clothes off. You could walk in with anything. Got a terrible earache. Okay, take your clothes off and have a look at you. <laughs> it's a hospital, they must know what they're doing. <laughs> Why you don't do that anywhere else? You know, you don't go up to the dentist and go, I've got a terrible toothache. Okay, pull your pants down, have a look at your ass. <laughs> and when you take your clothes off up the hospital, they always give you that hospital big blue gown. Have you seen that? Fuck, it's like a giant J cloth. That's what we're wearing, that's what they're doing. They're getting us to clean the wards for them now. You do whatever that doctor says. You're standing there in your giant J-cloth and he's like, could you lay on the floor for me? That's lovely. Could you give me your ankles? Could you make this noise? Mmm, that's good. Mm. <laughs> and have you noticed every time you're at the hospital, they want to know who the immediate family is? They keep asking, are you the immediate family? No, I'm not that fast. Who the fuck are the immediate family? Who are they? <laughs> You invite them around your house for dinner and they go, we're already here, goodbye, we've got to go now with the immediate family, goodbye. <laughs> Who makes this stuff up? You know, because these are distant relatives, you, you invite them around your house for dinner, they stand at the end of your drive going, hello, we're the distant relatives. <laughs> we won't be coming in. <laughs> Who makes this up? Because there's your cousin once removed. Why? What the fuck did he do? <laughs> Because there's your other cousin twice removed. I told you once, fuck off. <laughs> I couldn't call anybody anyway on my phone. If I had to call for an ambulance, not me. My mobile's knackered. I, I, it's really old, you've got to chuck coal in it, shit. <laughs> well, I won't renew it, I can't stand mobiles. People, have you noticed people always shout? As soon as they get a call on their mobile, Hello! <laughs> really? And they always walk away, they go, ah, I've got a call, got a call, private, 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 private. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Guess what? We can still fucking hear you. <laughs> and everyone's got cameras on their phones now, and they feel they've got to take a picture of fucking everything. You get these people that go, ah, no, I can take a picture on my phone. <laughs> yeah, then what? Well, I've got it on my phone. <laughs> yeah, fucking, then what? Well, I can keep it. Yeah, then what? Well, I've got to delete it, it takes up memory. <laughs> Even traffic wardens are taking pictures when they give us a ticket now. What happens when he gets his albums out? He goes, oh, look, there's one of me being a bastard. <laughs> Those were the days. You know what I hate about mobiles? Predictive text. Can't stand it. It's like someone buttoning your conversation all the time. You know, you're trying to send a message, they just, fuck, you can't do it. I'm just going to wear up the road. No, I'm just going to wear up the pub. No, I'm just going to wear up the shops. No, fuck off. <laughs> it's like twins. Have you ever noticed twins always want to finish each other's sentences off? You just think one day one of them's going to go, will you please let me finish a fucking sentence? <laughs> and mobiles are getting smaller. The trouble is your wife's handbag's getting bigger. Have you seen your wife when her mobile goes off in her bag? She disappears for a week and a half. <laughs> you can hear her in her bag going like, Where's my fucking mobile? <laughs> Size of women's handbags. Now, it's not an handbag anymore, it's a body bag. <laughs> Me and my missus, we was going out the other day, we were standing in the hallway, I said, oh, I said, it's all right, love, I'll take the rubbish out tomorrow. She went, fuck off, that's my bag. <laughs> Is this huge? It's 
still had the fucking horns on it and everything. <laughs> and men never go in women's handbags? No. Man has explored deep space, even landed on the moon. But if your wife goes, yeah, it's in my bag, you go, right, well, you fucking get out. <laughs> I am not going in there. <laughs> I've seen things going there and they ain't come out. <laughs> your wife ever asked you to hold her handbag while she's trying on some shoes in a shop? Just stand in the middle of the shop going like that. You just look a badly dressed transvestite holding a bag, you know? <laughs> Touch screen technology now, that's what it is with phones. That's how the bloke sells it to you in the shop. Is if it's something new, they go, yeah, it's got touchscreen technology. Like it's something new. We've had touchscreen technology for years. Go down the overnight garage about three in the morning and see all those pissheads doing touchscreen on that glass. <laughs> oh, Genesis! <laughs> Geniuses, these blokes are. They're pioneers. They come up with smash screen technology next. I said Genesis. <laughs> pioneers. I love that. You know when your wife's on the phone and she makes all those faces to you, but to what she's hearing on the phone, she go like that. No. You got out, what, what, what? <laughs> and then she got out, fuck off, I'm on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because your wife is an incredible psychic when she's on the phone. Your wife ever done that? Come off the phone to one of her mates and she's gone, isn't that amazing? I was just thinking about her and she called. <gasps> <gasps> So what about when you are thinking about her and she don't call, is that like really fucking weird as well? <laughs> you say to your wife, who are you thinking about now? And they go, no one. <gasps> and no one's calling! <laughs> your wife's like, I must be psychic, because there I was thinking you're a tosser, and it turns out you fucking are. <laughs> And everyone, everyone's on Facebook now. Anyone on Facebook? Yeah. Everyone's on Facebook. You know, so many kids now are talking to each other via their computer, they're forgetting how to have a fucking conversation. Do you know that? You know, in a few years' time, you'll have two kids walk up to each other in the high street and they go like, ah. <laughs> they're gonna know what the fuck that meant. I don't get Facebook. Would you walk up to somebody in the street and go, would you like to see my pants? Because that's what Facebook is. No one says a word to you all day, they got on that Facebook, they don't care, they go fucking nuts. Hello, my name's Keith. <laughs> I like polythene bags. <laughs> Sucking windows. <laughs> Geese. <laughs> Sometimes I like to pick my nose and wipe it under the chair. <laughs> and as you can see by my photograph, my knob is five foot six. <laughs> You didn't, want to <laughs> you didn't want to put your face on that photograph? No, nah, I'm worried about identity theft. Because <laughs> everyone's worried about that. Everyone's worried about ID theft now. It seems we've got to prove who we are 24 hours a day. It's like you ever do that thing when you go through the airport, it passport control, it's fucking madness. As soon as you hand that bloke your passport, you try and look like your own photograph. You're like... Oh, go back a few faces, you were in just now. <laughs> go on, fuck off. <laughs> it's no wonder they've made us paranoid. They've making us paranoid. For instance, I like watching the news, but you can't watch your news anymore, that shit in your pants. Because everything now is like they've got this breaking news. You know, you'd be sat there eating your tea and they'll have a sound of a jet plane going. <laughs> breaking news. Fucking hell, I win. <laughs> Why do they want to shit us up like that? You might as well have the newsreader run across the set, chucking his paper in the air, going, ah! That's the same effect. Then they don't tell you what it is. They go, breaking news, join us after the adverts. <laughs> Wait a minute, if this news is so breaking, why are you going to adverts? That's like a copper knocking on your door at three in the morning, going, I've got some grave news, I'm afraid. But first this, my hair is so bouncy. Because <laughs> you're worth it. 
there's a murderer on the loose. Ooh, Denon. <laughs> Fuck, is that stuff? I think that's the noise you make after you've eaten it. Do you know that? Huh? Ooh, Denon. <laughs> Have a whiff on that. That's a bad bacteria coming out, that is. <laughs> <laughs> They have 24 hour a day news now, it's not 24 hour a day news, it's 15 seconds of news repeated over and fucking over and again. You know, watching the news now is like going around your nan's house for tea. <laughs> it's the same experience, you know? Shall I print the kettle on? Oh no, I'll print the kettle on. <laughs> oh, I oh, know, I'll print the kettle on. <laughs> Put the fucking kettle on! In our house, in our house, in one room, we got a TV that works off of an aerial in one room, and in another room, they got, we got one that works off of a satellite. If you walk from one room to the other, you get a repeat of a repeat of the news. It's like, there's a murder on the loose. There's a murder on the loose. <laughs> Fuck, you got your name round? There's a murder on the loose. <laughs> I was watching TV last night. I was, have you noticed around about one o'clock, two in the morning, TV suddenly changes? Your TV suddenly gets all depraved. You'd be sat there watching it, and suddenly these half-naked women start coming on, laying on couches, going, call me now for a chat. <laughs> chat. Who's calling her for a chat? <laughs> Some bloke with his trousers around his ankles. Yeah, I'll call you for a chat, yeah. <laughs> Not calling her for a chat. They know blokes can't concentrate on more than one thing at a time. Could you shut up, love? I'm trying to concentrate here for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> what if you did ring them up for a chat? You actually rang them up and went, hello, yeah, I think the tiger economies of the Far East have capitalised on the reliance of our outsourcing and of our manufacturing industry. How do you feel about that, uh, Angel Annie? <laughs> My ass is your command. <laughs> chat, why don't they just say it? Call now. For a wank! <laughs> See blows jump. Oh, don't slap it about like that, mate. <laughs> That's not good for it, see? You don't want a cauliflower knob, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love that on those adverts. They call, they go, call now if you're single or even if you're not. Well, who's that then? That's fucking everyone, isn't it? <laughs> and have you noticed on those adverts, they're always whispering, they go, call 0800 555. They know your missus upstairs, she might fucking hear it. <laughs> Keep it down, love. That's lovely. That's great, yeah. You'd be a mug. They're prying on blokes' needs, taking money from you. You know, there's muggers all around the country going, we need to change our ways. These fuckers are earning a fortune. Soon you'll have muggers run up to you in the street and go, ah, oh, you! Give me your wallet. <laughs> now. Yeah, all right, love, give us a show. <laughs> love that. They go, they love on those others, they go, Cool. and we'll put you in touch with people in your area. People in your area? Hold on a minute, that's the reason he's calling, because he can't pull any birds in his area. <laughs> and you don't want to be at the off-licence, getting your beer, and the woman behind the counter goes, you know, your voice sounds familiar to me. <laughs> Does it? Right, see you later, love, fuck that. <laughs> and how local is it? It might be your wife in the next room. Hello? Hello? Is that you? No. <laughs> They have these late night quiz shows on the TV. I <laughs> right, see, I don't like quiz shows anyway. I was watching that one the other day, Deal or No Deal. You ever seen that? It's just opening boxes. Well, our postman's been doing that for years right now, haven't we? <laughs> I wouldn't mind on that show if one of those boxes was rigged with high explosives. They have to try and guess, not which one it is. All right, number 15 now. <gasps> you bastard! Boom! <laughs> Tune in to watch that. <laughs> But these late night quizzes, you should have a look at them back two in the morning. They try and make them all glamorous. They have these women come on in low cut tops going, Welcome to the casino. Casino. Do you know who's watching that? Some bloke just in from the pub holding a kebab, pissed out of his head, going, Come on! I've got a kid's dinner money riding on this. <laughs> Never see him go buying Casino Royale, did you? Sat with James Bond. James Bond's like, I'll raise you. Oh, fucking will you? <laughs> well, I'll raise you, me kebab. And some of the presenters of these late night quizzes, have a look at them, they look like fucking serial killers. They stare out at the screen at you going like that. What do you think it is? 
What do you think it is? Mm? I don't know. <laughs> you know, you fall asleep on your couch, you wake up, there's some bloke wondering about your TV going, What do you think it is? <laughs> mm? Help me! Because <laughs> houses, have you noticed houses are more scary now? You know, years ago, your house never made any noise. Now you're up and down all night trying to determine what the noise was. What is it with manufacturers, they want to scare the crap out of us now? Three in the morning, you'd be in bed asleep and suddenly your fridge would go... <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> Just in the middle of the night, some water will randomly come out your shower head, you know? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> we were nowhere near that, I mean... You know, a burglar gets in your place to see the fucker, you know? <laughs> Thank God you're here! <laughs> We've been shitting ourselves all night! <laughs> and since when? Since when do people start protecting themselves with sports equipment in their house? You know, you always hear people go, yeah, I've got a baseball bat on my bed. Somebody breaks in, bush. But there's only, there's only certain sports equipment that would do, you know? If someone got into your house, you couldn't suddenly whip out that ribbon thing they use in the gymnastics, you know? <laughs> hey, I'm not scared to use this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> someone gets in your house, you suddenly get some fucking hurdles. Get out of it! You know, so, someone's in your garden, you've got those fucking gym rings. Get out of my garden! <laughs> you know, your wife's on your doorstep. Use a dismount! Use a dismount on him! <laughs> you know? And people are using sports or commit to protect themselves in their house. But have you noticed in sport they're using what criminals use? A gun to start the race? Mind you, what else could you use? Couldn't use a knife, could you? On your march, get set. <laughs> well, go on then. <laughs> Mind you, that'd get you running, wouldn't it? Fuck, he's got a knife. <laughs> Even the police have changed the way they protect themselves. They've got that new Taser gun. That's a good idea. An electric shotgun. Brilliant. Who come up with that? What genius come up with that? An electric shotgun that, when threatened by a complete lunatic, is to fire the gun at them. They're still attached to you. <laughs> so now you're standing there attached to a complete lunatic. You've really fucked off because you're giving him 3,000 volts. <laughs> He's right in front of you going like that. When this stops, I'm going to kill you. I can't see, I can't see that Tazar gun taking the place of real guns, can you? In particular in films. It's not so romantic. You can't knock on someone's door and go, I'm afraid John is dead. <gasps> Did he have any last words? <laughs> yep. <laughs> you look at what? <laughs> Could have somebody like Tom Cruise being shot by one of them, you know? Dan, 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 dan. <laughs> Everyone's worried about crime. It seems, it seems, every day now, you switch on the TV, there's been a murder on the news, and the police are digging up someone's garden, looking for bodies. I don't know about you, but I prefer the old ground force. It was a much better fucking programme. <laughs> it's the same, it's the same. That's what murders are doing now, burying bodies in the garden before the wife gets home. He sort of shows her through the house, you know? Shows her the garden. Surprise! Oh, I wish my brother-in-law was there to see this. No, no, love, you won't be seeing him for quite some time, I would have thought. <laughs> And have you noticed every time there's a murder on the news, the police put a tent up? As soon as there's a murder, tent. <laughs> what if there's a murder in a tent? <laughs> what do they do then? Put up another fucking tent? Suddenly you've got a little campsite going, you know? You know, there's a mass killing, it turns into fucking Glastonbury, you know? <laughs> You've been over the murder tent? <laughs> Everyone, they, you know, I've, you see, I've never got me head around why police have sirens on their cars. That's like a burglar alarm, but for burglars, you know, it's like, woo, woo, we're coming! 
All right, well, I'd better be leaving then, aren't I? <laughs> you know, <laughs> the police arrive. Where the fuck is he? <laughs> they always get away. <laughs> That's probably because you told him you were fucking coming. <laughs> and the police can't catch criminals anymore, so they go on crime watch and ask us to do it. What's up? They're so busy on the TV, they ain't got time to catch criminals, you know? Have you seen this man? He is highly dangerous. Good job we're in the studio then, isn't it? <laughs> Never mind crime watch. There's so little police on our streets. I reckon we need a programme to look for coppers. <laughs> Have you seen this man? He wears a big helmet, answers to the name of Sarge. <laughs> it's not the police's fault. It's not their fault. They're caught up in bureaucracy, gone mad now. You know, they're back at the station filling out forms and paperwork instead of being on the street catching criminals when they want to be. And you can't do both. You can't run down the street after a criminal going, STOP! I shouted at him. <laughs> I helped him gently to the floor. <laughs> Rest your head on that, I said. You know, the police are so caught up in bureaucracy, gone mad, they've got their police horses doing it now. You've seen the riot horses, haven't you, with those glasses? That's not for the riot. They're reading glasses. <laughs> They're back at the station after catching up, you know? Oh, busy, busy, busy. <laughs> I love horses, I really do, you know? I always think there's like a couple of horses just somewhere in their stables, two of them standing together going like that. Here, Pete, 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 Pete. Watch what I can do with me feet. It's amazing. I know, I know. Watch, watch. <laughs> and it's not fair with police horses. It's one law for them and another one for us. All dog owners know if your dog craps in the street, you've got to get out of bag and pick it up, otherwise you get a fine. But police horses, they just dump in the middle of the street and just leave it. Not even a backward glance. Cool. Blimey, I felt that. <laughs> that burnt. That burnt. <laughs> well, how often do you see a copper get off of a horse with a big bin liner going like that? Oh, fucking. <laughs> fucking hate that when that. <laughs> <laughs> They're making us paranoid. Everyone, like blokes, you know this, you know this. You know when you come out the station late at night, you ever done this? You've caught yourself walking beyond a woman, you start to get suspicious of yourself. You're walking beyond her going, she's going to think I'm an attacker. <laughs> you know, to look less suspicious, you cross the street. Look, I'm not an attacker. <laughs> I'm not an attacker, I'm crossing the street. And you say to yourself, how does an attacker walk? I don't want to walk like an attacker. <laughs> I'm not an attacker. <laughs> Then you say to yourself, fuck, I'm on my own, I'm gonna get attacked. <laughs> ah! She's running, screaming, you're chasing her, trying to explain, no, no! <laughs> it worked out, I've got two months, it's all right. <laughs> Everyone now is going on about teenage crime, they're saying teenagers are getting involved in crime because of what they're listening to and what they're watching on the TV. I'll tell you what, it might be what they're listening to. I don't know if you've ever tried to run rapper CD. Who come up with the plastic wrapping for them fuckers? You can't get in them. You know, you can't. You'll be standing next to your hi-fi trying to unwrap a chill-out CD gun and I'm fucking get in it. <laughs> you need a knife to open them. That's what teenagers are doing. They've opened it with a knife, they listen to the music, blah, this is making me want to stab someone. <laughs> and I've got a knife. <laughs> it's a packaging companies I blame. Painkillers, they're the worst. You know, they always put in that foil stuff. Every time you want one, they pop out onto the floor. You know, you're bending down, trying to pick it up, going, great, I'm taking this for fucking back pain! <laughs> so I remember when you was a kid and your mum and dad would follow all those warnings on packaging, you know, keep out of reach of children? Like painkillers, razor blades, they put in that top cupboard and they go, ah, keep away from that top cupboard. Keep away from that top cupboard. Then all the stuff that would instantly kill you, like drain cleaner and bleach, just under the sink. <laughs> You know? 
No, your kid's got like a bar stool, optics. I like my armpit straight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why don't they give teenagers more credit? Kids don't copy what they see on the TV. Loads of kids watch Strictly Come Dancing, but you don't see them on street corners threatening people with a fucking foxtrot. <laughs> that would freak you out, wouldn't it, if a bunch of hoodies walked up to you and went, Oi, get your mobile, otherwise we'll cha-cha you. <laughs> You know, like a woman runs up to a copper. You gotta help me! I've just been jived! <laughs> what happened? Well, he sort of took me, sort of swam around like that. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> Quick, there's the police. Quick step. <laughs> and were the criminals now? Were the criminals? How many times have you walked out of a shop, you know, and that alarm goes off at the exit because you've got something in your bag, and you do all that over Oscar acting, you kind of go there. Oh! Is it me? <laughs> Is it say in my bag? <laughs> you know, and us, we, we go back in the shop and explain, if you're a real shoplifter, you fuck off. <laughs> when have you ever seen a real shoplifter go back in the shop and go, yeah, 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 it's all right. It's because I stole all them DVDs. <laughs> all right, see you later, mate. See you, bye. <laughs> You ever had one of those alarms go off when you go in a shop? What the fuck are they worried about? What, we're gonna add stuff? <laughs> and some places don't even want to let you in. Have you been to the local mini-mart? They've got those electric sliding doors. Fuck, they're so slow, you can't get in them. You're walking towards those electric sliding doors and they're going, OK, we're opening. <laughs> That's if you're going in. If you're walking past them buggers, it's a different story. They go, out. <laughs> you coming in? No, fuck off, I'm going down here. They're like big shopping flashers. They go like, ah, <laughs> do you want to see my bananas? Because <laughs> I, I always think, you know that fruit section in the supermarket? Very highly charged in there. Have you seen the fruit purse filling up the fruit? That's why I never buy loose fruit. You see these people just filling the fruit up in the fruit section, go like, ah, <gasps> oh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <sighs> no. Fuckers, you know, because they put it back. I hate these people. Go to walk away with something, they're going, nah. And then we come along, we buy it, we take it home, and then we get a mouthful of knob smeared banana. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do I want this apple? Do I want this apple? <laughs> nah. <laughs> get a big melon sat on it, you know? Do I want a melon? <laughs> no, it's been up my ass. Or better still, you know, you get these people, they decide they don't want something when they're in another section of the supermarket, so they just sort of slyly slip it down, you know? <laughs> so you'd be walking around the supermarket and you'll come across like fish paste in the middle of the bread section going, no, no, I'm fish paste. <laughs> this is a bread section. That bastard put me here. <laughs> and Tesco's, they're everywhere now, aren't they? They're like a fucking disease. Tesco's Express, that's the good one, that's the fast one. They spent years researching fast, quick and easy meals for us to dash in, only to be served by Snail Boy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I like it when blokes go to the supermarket, they never get a trolley, they always get a basket, they always say the same thing, no, I'm not getting much. And then they just fill it with shit. <laughs> They're mollified by food, you all of that, that, that. Have you noticed the heavier the basket gets, the further up the arm it gets? You know, it's quite heavy, quite fucking heavy, that is. <laughs> then it goes to the crook of the arm, fuck it, no. Then they have a go getting on their freaking shoulder, you know? <laughs> That's why you all see lines of blokes at the checkout with the basket on the floor and they're just kicking it all the way up the queue, like, ah. It's so like grocery dribbling, the highlights from today's shopping. Dan, 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 dan. You know, I love that queue in the supermarket. There's always the impatient person on the end of a long line. Have you seen them just twitching their leg like that? Come on. Come on. Why do these people get really impatient? Do they suddenly do a fucking Elvis tribute? Come on, man, I want to do my shopping. Running out of time.
And you only do that when you're standing still. Have you noticed? You only twitch your leg when you're standing. You never do that when you're walking. Why? Why? You get impatient when you walk, didn't you? You know, walking towards the station, going, oh, my fucking train's on time. <laughs> fucking late yesterday. <laughs> and it's always your bottom half, never your top half. Never see like a woman standing on a doorstep waiting for a plumber going, here's that fucking plumber. 